All right, let's let's switch tack here a little bit. Um, as these models get more and more powerful, um, it's worthwhile to to also talk about AI safety and uh, uh, and. OpenAI has uh, has released a document just uh, just recently that, where you are one of the undersigners. Um, uh, Sam has testified in front of Congress. What what worries you most about AI safety? Yeah, I can talk about that. So let's take a step back and talk about the state of the world. So, you know, you've had this AI research happening and it was exciting and now you have the GPT models and now you all get to play with all the different chatbot and assistants and, you know, Bard and mm -hmm. ChatGPT and you say, okay, that's pretty cool. It can do things. And indeed, there already are, you can start perhaps worrying about the implications of the tools that we have today. And I think that it is a very valid thing to do. But that's not where I allocate my concern. The place where things get really tricky is when you imagine fast forward in some number of years, a decade, let's say. How powerful will AI be? Of course, with this incredible future power of AI, which I think will be difficult to imagine, frankly. With an AI this powerful, you could do incredible, amazing things that are perhaps even outside of our dreams. Like if you can really have a dramatically powerful AI. But the place where things get challenging are directly connected to the power of the AI. It is powerful. It is going to be extremely unbelievable, un unbelievably powerful. And it is because of this power that's where the safety issues come up. And I'll mention three, I, I personally see three, like, you know, when, when you get, so you, met, you alluded to the letter mm -hmm. that uh, we posted at OpenAI a few days ago, actually yesterday about what we th about some ideas that we think would be good to implement to navigate the challenges of superintelligence. Mm -hmm. Now what is superintelligence? Why did we choose to use the term superintelligence? The reason is that superintelligence is meant to convey something that's not just like an AGI. With AGI we said well, you have something kind of like a person, kind of like a coworker. Superintelligence is meant to convey something far more capable than that. Mm -hmm. When you have such a capability, it's like, can we even imagine how it will be? But without question, it's going to be unbelievably powerful. It could be used to solve incomprehensibly hard problems if it is used well, if we navigate the challenges that superintelligence pose, poses. We could, we could radically improve the quality of life. But the power of superintelligence is so vast. So the concerns. The concern number one has been expressed a lot, and this is the scientific problem of alignment. Mm -hmm. You might want to think of it from the, as, an, as an analog to nuclear safety. You know, you build a nuclear reactor. You want to get the energy. You need to make sure that it won't melt down, even if there's an earthquake, and even if someone tries to, I don't know, smash a truck into it. Yep. So this is the superintelligence safety, and it must be addressed in order to contain the vast power of superintelligence. This is called the alignment problem. One of the suggestions that we had in, our, in the post was an approach that an international organization could do to create various standards at this very high level of capability. And I want to make this other point you know, about the post and also about um, our CEO, Sam Altman, congressional testimony where he advocated for regulation of AI. The intention is primarily to put rules and standards of various kinds on the very high level of capability. You know, you could maybe start looking at GPT-4, but that's not really what is interesting. Mm -hmm. 
what is relevant here, but something which is vastly more powerful than that. When you have a technology so powerful, it becomes obvious that you need to do something about this power. So that's the first concern, the first challenge to overcome. The second challenge to overcome is that, of course, we are people, we are humans, humans of interests. Mm -hmm. And if you have super intelligences controlled by people, well, who knows what's going to happen? I do hope that at this point we will have the super intelligence itself try to help us solve the challenge in the world that it creates. This is not, no longer an unreasonable thing to say. Like if you imagine a super intelligence that indeed sees things more deeply than we do, much more deeply, to understand reality better than us, we could use it to help us solve the challenges that it creates. Then there is the third challenge, which is the challenge maybe of natural selection. You know what the Buddhists say, that change is the only constant. So even if you do have your super intelligences in the world and they are all, we've managed to solve alignment, we've managed to solve, no one wants to use them in very destructive ways. We've managed to create a life of unbelievable abundance, which really, like not just, not just material abundance, but health, longevity, yeah. like all the things we don't even try dreaming about because they're so obviously impossible. If you've got to this point, then there is the third challenge of natural selection. Things change. You know, you know that natural selection applies to ideas, to organizations, and that's a challenge as well. Maybe the neural link solution of people becoming part AI will be one way we will choose to address this. I don't know. But I would say that this kind of describes my concern. And specifically, just as the concerns are big, if you manage, man, it is so worthwhile to overcome them because then we could create truly unbelievable lives for ourselves that are completely even unimaginable. So it is, it is like a challenge that's really, really worth overcoming. I very much like the idea that there needs to be the sort of threshold above which we, we really, really should pay attention because you know, speaking as a, as, as a German, if it's like European style regulation, often from people that don't really know very much about the field. You can also completely kill innovation, um, which is a, w w which be a, would be a little bit of a pity. But let's change tact here a little bit. So this is a room mostly filled with entrepreneurs, um, uh, lots of which are actually using tools from, from, from OpenAI. So just practically speaking, um, what are the main things or the main pieces of advice you would give folks that are building on top of large language models? Like what is the, let's say, canonical set of uh, things they should read, they should uh, think about um, in, in using these models well? Yeah. Advice. Advice. <laughs> Practical, with yeah. a few minutes to spare. A few minutes to spare. <laughs> I'll point out that I am, with the caveat that I am not in similar shoes, I think that two things are valid, two things are worth keeping in mind. One is obvious, some kind of special data that cannot be found anywhere else. That can be extremely helpful. And I think the second one is to always keep in mind, not just about where things are right now, but where things will be in two years, in four years, and try to plan for that. I think those two things are very helpful. The data is helpful today, but even a little bit, kind of trying to get an intuitive sense for yourself of where do you imagine things being, let's say, in three years, and how will it affect some of the basic assumptions of what, you, what the product is trying to do? I think that can be a helpful thing. So what's the sort of thing that, so when I think about this, I, I think about, well, we used to be in a world with really small context windows, right, and then, you know, I have embeddings, I page things into context windows, like all the classic stuff. But maybe that just goes away. Maybe context windows become really large or something like that. Um, I, so I'm trying to extrapolate from these sort of past things. Is that what you mean? Something like this. I think it's worth trying. I'll give you another example. Yeah. Like say you're playing with a model, and you can see that the model can do something really cool and really maybe amazing if it was reliable. But it's so unreliable, so you kind of like forget it. It's not, there's no point using it. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing which can change. Something which is, like if you can, for example, something which is unreliable can become reliable enough. 
And so if you're just kind of experiencing those models, you're paying attention to what people That's are sharing, and you say, oh, like, look at this cool thing which works once in a while, but if it worked, what would happen? So these kind of thought experiments, I would argue, can That's help prepare for the kind of near to medium term future. That, that's super good advice. I think we are, we are unfortunately at time. We could, we, we could do this forever. Please join me in uh, uh, thanking Ilya.